In this video, we're talking all about inflation and how traders can use the inflation studies that we're about to discuss to improve their trading dramatically. Fundamentals are not something that most retail traders use, but they are incredibly powerful and most hedge fund managers, big traders, professionals incorporate some level of fundamentals in their trading. In fact, most hedge funds rely more on fundamentals than they do on technicals. So if the pros are doing that, we as regular traders here on, uh, you know, out in the streets, we should try and incorporate some level of fundamentals as well. So in this video, we're going to talk all about inflation and I'm going to explain it to you in the simplest way I can so that you don't have to go to four years of, of economics to, you know, college in order to understand this stuff. I'm going to try and keep it relatively, sim relatively simple and keep it relevant to a trader. We're not just going to talk economics. We're going to talk about how you as a trader can tangibly use this information that is so often talked about on TV, YouTube, you know, all sorts of financial outlets. They're talking about inflation constantly. So let's get into it. Inflation explained and notably how to profit from it. How can we actually take advantage of understanding the inflation readings and where they may be going next? Well, first of all, we need to know what inflation is. And to understand that, why traders should care, we have to understand kind of what implications the inflation uh, readings of the world have on real world everyday stuff as well as financial markets. So inflation is, <clears throat> in its simplest form, it's the rise in the price of goods and services. Uh, it actually can be the rise or the fall of price and goods. It's like when you go to the store one day and something costs you, I don't know, $10 and the next day it costs you 11. That change in price may not seem like a lot, but it is incredibly impactful to the global economy, to the local economy, uh, to the consumer and all sorts of levels. And this has a massive impact on the financial market because uh, inflation can be, you know, how, how many of us have, have gone to the gas pumps and it's suddenly very, very expensive and that hurts your pockets, right? That impact is massive on financial markets. And again, we're gonna explain it and understand how to benefit from it in this video. So it is basically the rise in prices of goods and services. I'm talking anything from getting your car filled up with fuel to buying something at the grocery store to uh, renting an apartment. All of these things uh, are, of course, they have goods and services that are priced in a certain way and watching those prices is powerful. So another way of thinking about inflation is it's actually the loss of fiat purchasing power. So if the price of stuff is going up, what's actually really happening is the value of your dollar or euro or Canadian dollar or whatever you're using, your pound, whatever you're using, if prices are going up around you, it's not just prices going up. What it's really doing is it's really the power of your currency is going down. It's losing value. And if you looked at any long-term chart, maybe we can show something on the screen right now. This is the purchasing power of the United States dollar over time. And you can see it loses. One of the worst long-term investments you can own is just holding cash under a mattress. You know, like all those, uh, you know, people who would, who would hide their cash under the mattress and think that they're safe. Well, you can't hide from inflation. None of us can. It's a really powerful force that is pretty persistent in financial markets in the last couple hundred years. Actually, for longer than that, even back to the Roman times, there were periods of elevated inflation. Anyways, that's another history lesson. Wrong channel for that. Let's get into, of course, the uh, the concept here. So you can see this, this red line here is the price of goods and services. And of course, the blue line is the fiat purchasing power. And again, these things usually move in the opposite direction. Your currency usually over time becomes value less. And again, we have to be aware of that, but also it has hit big impacts on financial markets. So why should traders care? So why does this matter to you and I if we're trading each and every day, especially if you're a day trader, this doesn't matter to you at all, right? Wrong. Day traders have a fallacy of thinking that, you know, economic figures don't impact them, but they certainly can create some very strong trends in the market and knowing what those trends involve and what they entail from the inflation figures can be very powerful. So let's talk about this. So tr the reason traders should care is because the central banks care. The Federal Reserve here in the United States the Bank of Canada in Canada, the Bank of England in the UK, uh, the ECB or the European Central Bank, these places watch inflation really, really carefully because it can make or break an economy. And so central banks have a very strong interest in keeping inflation 
at or near 2% per year. That is the Western uh, financial thought process that basically around a 2% inflation level is ideal. That is a level, we'll get into why that's so ideal in just a moment, but it's a healthy pace of inflation. It's not too hot, it's not too low. And we'll talk about that in just a moment, but <clears throat> what you have to understand is that as a trader, the simplest way to understand it is that why should you care? the most powerful financial entities in the world that move markets the most, they care tremendously about this topic. So to the actions of central banks, this, this is a really important part here. The actions central banks may take to accomplish this agenda of keeping inflation at, a, at or around 2% per year uh, really moves the markets because what they may do to to uh, stop or, or uh, you know cool or, or raise inflation is all about the interest rates. They can rise interest rates or or let interest rates go down, cut rates or hike rates, and this has a massive impact on the financial market. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So first of all, we need to talk about how can we, as you know, regular people, how can we view what inflation is actually looking like? Well, we have what is called the CPI. This is the Consumer Price Index. And if you've never heard of this, the Consumer Price Index is basically a way to track the changes in prices of goods and services over time. Now, uh, the CPI is basically, I like to think of it as like a basket of different things. Picture like a basket with a bunch of items in it. Like you have like a Coca-Cola can and a McDonald's, you know, uh, McFlurry in there, I don't know. Just like a bunch of random things. And if we were to track these prices over time, within this basket, we could check the price of the overall basket over time, we could get an idea of what, uh, broadly speaking, prices are doing in the United States or if we're studying this basket in Canada or the UK, we could study their respective CPI basket as well. So CPI has several components. I've drawn a little wheel here and all this is just representing here is what actually makes up the basket of CPI stuff. Now each one of these are kind of a basket in their own so it's like baskets within a basket kind of thing but basically understand that CPI components at its simplest form involve things like food and beverages, uh, energy, which is like, of course, like gasoline and things like that. Housing, which is anything from apartments to home purchases, transportation, medical care, recreation, and other. So the reason I point this out to you is that within the CPI, lots of different things can impact what the CPI actually turns out to be. And the number one thing, or another thing that you need to know about this is that in red, you can see this is the most volatile stuff. The most volatile stuff is definitely gonna be your food and energy. What do I mean by that? Well, these prices fluctuate the most. Energy, if you watch the oil market, it's going up and down all the time, and the price that we pay at the pumps is pretty constantly changing. And this has a lot of impact and can very much sway what the CPI is looking like. So, some, uh, some, some, uh, traders prefer to actually look at the core CPI. Now the core CPI removes a couple of those very volatile things and looks at some of the more staple goods to get a more reliable look at what prices are really doing. So most volatile gets actually removed. You can see they're crossed out. So we remove food and energy from the equation to get a better look at what inflation is looking like. Um, now again, CPI is a way to measure inflation. The reason you need to understand this is because this is how we're going, this is what we're going to consult in order to make trading decisions. So now that we know what the inflation reading, the CPI, the consumer price index, what that actually is and why it matters, we can now talk about with those measurements, what do we do with them? Well, we have to understand what these measurements can kind of tell us about the economy and where things are headed. So here's the thing. When we take a look at inflation in terms of a position, what's the positioning of inflation right now? I've broken it down to three broadly speaking categories of inflation that I pay attention to. The first one here is when CPI is 1.5%. Remember, the ideal spot was 2%. That's again, in terms of like what the Bank of Canada and the Bank of England and what the Fed, they generally speaking, they want 2% inflation per year. So if things are lower than that, if we're seeing, for example, CPI under 1.5%, 1.5% or less, I like to call this area disinflation. This is not a perfect number, by the way, this is just my educated guess. Under or at 1.5%, we're gonna call that kind of disinflation. Uh, and this is actually not good. 
Now, again, remember why 2%, why not 0%? Well, too little inflation is actually tough because, um, you know, I'll show you this. this, this, we're gonna jump down to this section here for a second. Low inflation shows economic recession, potentially, and a lack of demand and growth. Because think about it, if prices are not being bid up by consumers consistently, that shows that there's a lack of demand. Maybe people aren't buying, you know, items at the store. They're they're saving their money, or um, people aren't renting apartments and bidding up rents. Obviously, that sounds like you know that might be a good thing for you and I. And of course, you know, in some ways it would be, but for the economy, not so much because that lack of spending and lack of money movement is not so great for an economy. Again, we don't want too much of that either because too much inflation. Uh, I've marked it as 3.5% or more in terms of the CPI. Uh, that is what we call hot inflation. And in 2022, we experienced that quite a bit. Inflation remained very elevated and in the US went up to like 9%. Now, 9% is far away from 2% and there were some serious concerns around that. So high inflation, uh, it can lead to runaway prices, which can hurt uh, the economy quite a bit. As you can probably imagine, runaway prices are no fun for any of us. If you're thinking about trying to get a new house or uh, buying a new car, uh, anybody try and get a car during 2022, it was a nightmare. Uh, the, the prices of used cars and new cars, they were flying high because consumers were bidding up those prices. Now, sometimes it can actually be like in the case of 2022, we had supply line issues due to the Russia invasion, invasion of Ukraine. Uh, we saw a lot of supply line issues across the board. Same thing with COVID. These things cause inflation because a lack of supply creates a huge amount of demand and everybody rushes for products, bidding them up to the heavens. It's not fun for consumers. And what it actually can do is it actually can lead to an overheating of the economy. People are rushing product prices so high that the consumer gets squashed and they can't afford anything. And maybe some of you guys might say that sounds a little bit like the United States today and other places, of course, like, you know, the UK is experiencing this as well. Many places are. Uh, it, it can be very devastating. And this is why the Fed wants that inflation not to go too high. The last thing they want is to overheat the economy and kill the consumer to the point that there's a massive recession that follows. This has happened in the past in the United States. Uh, you know, go take a look at uh, some of the times in the previous uh, you know, decades where we saw very elevated levels of inflation and it led to some really tough years afterwards. So will that happen here in the United States right now? Many people would speculate that that could be the case. And that's why in the last few years uh, with all this inflation, people now have like a slight chance of, of a recession uh, here in the United States that could be pretty devastating due to all the, the prices running up so much like they have. So the point is high inflation, not so good. Really low inflation, not so good. Sweet spot inflation, which I've marked here on this as 1.5 to 3.5% inflation is coming comfortably within the realm of what the Fed kind of wants. It's not perfect. 3.5% is pretty high. 1.5% is still low. But I like to call this just generally speaking, pretty close to where things have, have you know, uh, kind of gotten back to where the Fed wants them. During this time here in 2023, 2023 has been incredibly bullish year for stocks. And I'm going to break this down here. What each one of these categories tells us about financial markets, because this is the part that is really key. If you know how markets generally behave in each one of these categories, you can use that to your massive advantage, which is something that I use in my own trading. So we'll get into that next. So again, remember that the Fed's goal is to keep moderate inflation with max employment. So how do they do that? Well, here's what they do. Okay, so in this category here, uh, the disinflation period, what the Federal Reserve has as its tool is interest rates. Now I'm talking Federal Reserve for the US dollar example. If you're in the Bank of England territory, you're talking about UK, that's a different story. We're just talking here as an example in the US uh, example, okay? So for the Federal Reserve, if they see CPI is you know, very low, what will they do? Well, they might choose to cut interest rates, making borrowing more accessible to businesses and to consumers who may wanna go out and buy a car or buy a house. So in this case, Fed may cut rates, okay? In this case, that has some implications on the market. We'll talk about that in just a second. 
in the middle spot, sweet spot, the Fed is pretty content. They may, in this case, Fed may hold. They might just be good to keep interest rates at that level. Again, they raise interest rates to slow the economy down. They cut interest rates to speed the economy up. This is their measurement. This is, again, Western philosophy of how financial markets can work. Uh, and, and then next, let's talk about the last one, which is, of course, high levels of inflation. The Fed may hike interest rates, okay? So... This is what we saw, if you're watching this video relatively recently to when I, I want to record this, in 2022 and 2023, we've seen a lot of rate hikes because inflation has been on the upper limits of this. It's been very hot inflation in the last year and a half. Well, the Fed does what? They raise rates to try and keep things under control. Next up, we've got to talk about how to trade it. And this is really key because in the case of using this information, there's three different categories that I've broken down and three different ways to look at them. In a disinflation environment where things are really slow, this, in my opinion, uh, and, and studying traditionally kind of market sentiment, this is generally speaking in a really low period, this is a scary time. This is recession. This is fear in the world. This is uncertainty if central banks and economies will be able to survive, all that good stuff not so good. It's like 2008. This is terrible, right? It's a really, really tough time. This, generally speaking, can be a really positive scenario for gold and silver as people may be very, very fearful of what's going to happen and move out of the dollar, move out of stocks and go into something good old fashioned like gold and silver. This is also a time where maybe other currencies like the Japanese yen or other stronger currencies out there uh, may look more attractive relative to our US dollar example here. So again, uh, it's bullish for gold, for silver, other currencies that look stronger and healthier, and finally also bonds. Bonds typically do well during recession as people may um, you know, think that rate cuts are coming and, and again, bonds trade heavily based on what interest rates are going to do. And so as we'll speak about probably in a future video about interest rates, this is a really important thing. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, do me a quick favor, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're new. We have more videos like this coming. These are a lot of work to put together. So if you do enjoy these types of videos, again, help us out, hit that thumbs up button for the algorithm. Okay, finally, we also have bearish stuff. In a disinflationary environment where inflation is very low or possibly shrinking, Stocks and indices don't look great. Because again, this is showing that the demand in the economy is really low. And low demand is probably not gonna do well for companies who are really struggling. Finally, we also have the US dollar down or bearish because people are probably not gonna be too confident in the US dollar when the economy is totally slowing up. And uh, again, bond prices are going up, yields are going down, people are, are very concerned. Think about it this way, dollar not so good in a disinflationary environment. Uh, so something to think about there. The next category is talking about the sweet spot when inflation is at what the Federal Reserve probably deems a pretty healthy zone or at least close to that 2% target. This environment is totally different than the first one and the last one. In this case, we're actually, in my opinion, this is where you want to be very bullish stocks and indices and equities and things like that. Like this is the period where if things look confident, things look okay, the Fed's not going to raise interest rates on you and the economy looks pretty strong. All of these things, great time to buy stocks and indices. Personally, one of my favorite styles and timings uh, to trade stocks and indices is in the sweet spot environment. In fact, uh, we briefly have kind of come back closer to that area since 2022's mayhem. And it's been a really great year for me in 2023, trading primarily uh, stocks and indices, uh, you know, during kind of coming back into a little bit more of a sweet spot. Will it stay there? We'll see. Again, things are uh, still developing every day. But anyways, the next thing is, of course, during this period of time, we also see uh, non-USD currencies doing well. Because again, this is kind of an optimistic time and foreign investment might be elevated uh, and other currencies might do pretty well. Uh, because in this spot, the, what drives the US dollar higher is a lot of times it's rising interest rates and a red hot economy. So in this case, the US dollar is not really necessarily like full on bearish, but it's definitely not full on bullish. So I'd say it's closer to bearish during this category. And so is gold because gold typically does well in fearful environments or in highly inflationary environments. So both of those situations are not the case here in the sweet spot. 
because during the sweet spot, we're seeing things uh, kind of normalize and doing very well overall. And gold typically doesn't do well in confident market environments. Usually, uh, that's that's there's a little there should be a little asterisk next to that because it's not perfect science with any of this stuff. There's other factors than just inflation for sure. This is just kind of a, a lens of inflation to consider in your toolbox. Finally, hot inflation. Hot inflation is pretty much just bullish for the US dollar. If you take a look at the 2022 year, the dollar just screamed higher all year long. And it was because interest rates were going up and up and up because inflation was going up and up and up. And the Fed was trying to combat that rise in inflation by raising the interest rates in the United States. So the point is US dollar typically does very good during that time. On the bearish side, pretty much everything. Stocks don't look so great, like they didn't look great in 2022. Non-USD currencies like the euro, the pound, everything against the dollar typically will fall uh, in a very hot inflation area where the Fed is you know, on the door knocking and raising rates. Those things are gonna put a lot of pressure on the dollar to the upside. And of course, that means other currencies may do less well. And finally, bonds typically don't do well because rising interest rates make current bonds or old bonds, previously issued bonds, less attractive to investors because why buy a bond at 2% when it looks like interest rates are gonna go up to 3%? I might just wait and buy a bond once interest rates get much higher. So that's why bonds can be a very important market as well. We've probably got another video coming on bonds. Lots of stuff here, so make sure to subscribe if you have not already. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you something on the Edge Finder, which is our team's market data software, where we can take a look at some inflation figures. And what you'll notice is that uh, there's all sorts of different major economies and their respective inflation here reported. And if you take a look at the blue line, that's gonna be our US dollar uh, related uh, inflation. So of course, when it comes to inflation, we've been, uh, we saw a very high spike in inflation during 2022. And in 2023, we saw a decline in inflation. Well, one thing when it comes to scoring and adding in inflation to my trading strategy is I wanna take into account what is going on with particular currencies uh, in our top setups algorithm. So if you're not familiar with the Edge Finder, what this tool does is it takes into account tons of different market data, specifically to this video talking about inflation, uh, the Edge Finder automatically pulls in the latest inflation statistics. And then what it does is it actually scores and ranks all of the different assets on the far left. So one thing that we often hear from people who are using our tools are, you know, they want to use fundamentals in their trading, like, you know, growth and inflation and unemployment and interest rates and use all that information to better their trading. But it's a lot of work to keep up with and to check all this stuff. So the Edge Finder does a pretty cool thing. It takes into account all of this data and it pretty much ranks and files things for you. So everything that we're talking about in this video uh, is pretty much accounted for the way I explained it uh, is accounted for in the edge finder where it takes into account inflation as well as many other key metrics, scores the totals and gives us biases. So one thing that you'll notice here is that when we're looking at the euro versus the dollar, the pound versus the dollar, what we're seeing is recently the inflation in the United States has spiked back up again, pointing towards a bullish reading on the dollar. Now remember, as we've gone in this video so far, uh, talking about inflation rising is bullish for the currency because the central bank may be more likely to act. And so we're getting certain readings and part of that weighting is coming directly from our inflation study that we're talking about. So you can directly see how the lessons that we're discussing in this video are in, in fact certainly being reflected in the scoring algorithm from the Edge Finder, which is for me personally where I find the trades that I am taking. So inflation as well as other things are playing a serious weighting into which trades I am actually looking to take on what particular assets. For example, right now at the time of recording this, we know inflation is ticking up. Well, that inflation reading uh, is pointing towards a slightly more bearish reading for gold as the dollar may become more attractive and put downward pressure on the gold market. If you'd like access to the Edge Finder, again, you can find more information down below in the description. So now that you guys have seen a little bit of our software tool that we use to calculate and monitor inflation automatically, I wanna tell you about how you can get access to it. 
The link will be down below in the description if you'd like to chat with someone on our team. You can have a direct message conversation to see if this tool would be a fit for you. It is a high level tool that our team has put together over time. We're a software company out of Atlanta, Georgia. And if you'd like a copy, I encourage you, message us, ask for discounts. And as a subscriber, we'll see if we can set you up with a copy for uh, a discounted rate uh, and see if the tool would be worth while to you. You can also find more information on our website, a1trading.com. Also, if you'd like to get access to our trade alerts when I'm taking trades, when I'm sharing whatever I'm doing inside of the, the our Discord, you can sign up for those down below as well. Uh, I also have Frank, who is uh, my partner, my trading partner here uh, at A1 Trading. He's also sharing his trades and ideas, and he's also one of the developers of our software, the Edge Finder. You can also join our free Telegram channel, which will be linked down below in the description as well. If you want to join in for analysis, we cover inflation inflationary topics, as well as so many other things, trade ideas, gold, indices, currencies, all sorts of stuff there. So make sure to join that. It's totally free to do. And uh, finally, I want to tell you guys, if you have not already, uh, watch this video that's showing up on the screen right now. It should be a card popping up in your top right. This is my full strategy, which takes into consideration inflation, as well as many other components that I actually use to make trading decisions uh, that pretty much roll up into what the edge finder is. So click this video and uh, hope to see you in that one. And finally, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. If you're looking to improve as a trader, we've got some cool free resources here that I wanted to share as we close today's video. Down below in the description, there is a link to join our Discord channel or our Telegram channel. And we also have our website, a1trading.com, where traders can get access to free course material to help you improve as a trader. Remember, we are also live Monday through Friday on this channel around 9.30 a.m. US Eastern, broadcasting most live news events and that sort of thing. So hope to see you there. And also we do have a couple videos here showing up on the screen. If either of these seems like it might be helpful to you, then make sure to click here or here and we'll see you there.